All right, we are live. Um, today is February 18, 2017. And uh, we have today with us Sean Swanson. And Jim will take over the uh, the hosting and that will help. And every, welcome everybody. We have Astrid, Gabriel, um, Krelak, uh, and Lila. Uh, and we are at humancolony.org. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. Hey, Sean. Hey. Hey. Greetings, everybody. Hey, it's my privilege and honor to introduce Sean Swanson and welcome him to this broadcast. And he's going to be channeling for us uh, Ishua the Yugil. Do I pronounce yes. that correctly? Ishua, you can say Ishua. He'll usually say Ishua for the Yagil civilization. Ishua. Very good. And thank and, you for having uh, me on here. Oh, you're very welcome. It's really lovely to have you. We're very pleased and honored to have you here. And a lot of people have been looking forward to this. I'm, I'm surprised I, there's several people that are missing from the row here, but uh, they'll be here, I'm sure. But uh, first of all, I just wanted to ask you how this all started for you. Channeling started for me really before I even knew channeling was something that people did. And I was working as a healing facilitator in Southern California. I was very in tune with subtle, sensitive energies. And so one evening, I was reading a book about the idea of a civilization known as Atlantis. And I started to feel like the description, I had been there before, and I had like goosebumps, that sense of having really connecting with that. And started to feel the energy in the room shift, which is something I've noticed before when I was doing healing facilitation sessions. And this bright, intelligent energy, consciousness came into the room. And I felt some adjustment coming on in the back of my throat and my upper body and around this area and i just suddenly said two words came through my voice it wasn't really me talking it came through and said love you and this immense energy poured through me this loving soothing nurturing energy flowed through my being very profound and very intense, uh, supportive. And I just sat with that for maybe 20, 25, 30 minutes. And tears, joyful tears flowing down my face. And I realized that the, I may have in that moment channeled those words. So cut the story a little shorter. The next evening, I sat down about the same time, started reading the book, picking up at the same place where I had left off the night before, and almost instantly, the whole thing started over again. The energy came in the room. I said those two words, channeled them, love you. And the tears, the joy, the feeling, the sensation came through me, and I really just sat there and experience that sensation for 20, 25, 30 minutes again. And that really is my sense of how the channeling began for me. And uh, you know, I, I read a few books, a couple chapters and a couple of books, so I could learn how to channel consciously through sitting down and choosing to, to channel at a certain time. And so it doesn't just come through me how it would when I was doing healing facilitation sessions. And I, uh, I got started along those lines and I started channeling for one friend at a time and then I started channeling for two friends and then eventually more people and just took off from there. Yeah. Fantastic. It's funny, I didn't know what channeling was until it happened to me either. Okay. I was a healer and working on Max when it happened. So. <laughs> oh, cool. But, uh, awesome. But I wanted to ask, what were the original messages that Aishwa had for the people? Well, I suppose the, there are several energies, I mean, several messages that come through in a variety of energies. And it's, there's feelings, messages that come through in feelings, and there's word messages, thought, 
telepathic messages, in terms of how they share the messages, is that we are all one, the idea to feel the infinite that you are in a way that's most uplifting for you in each moment. And allow yourself to know that your value is infinite, your worth is infinite, and that all that you experience in life is an expression of you, just from a different point of view. In that way, what you put out is what you get back. So as you appreciate yourself, you learn to appreciate others, so you realize are reflections of you. The more you appreciate others who are reflections of you, the more you get back experiences of being appreciated and appreciating. So that all the messages in my experience, really the centerpiece comes down into that knowing who we are. We exist here and now as all that is, the one is the all, the all is the one, and how we experience each moment really is going to be a reflection of what we most strongly put out, what we most strongly believe in each moment, our strongest thoughts, feelings, intentions, attitudes, expressions, and actions that we put out tune us in to the reality that we experience. And when we know we are all that is, when we know our value is infinite, our worth is infinite, and all other that is out here seemingly is also of infinite worth, and we get back this experience this, then there are an infinite number of ways to experience this. So this is really the message that they live with, the understanding that they live with, and having this knowledge and understanding allows them, with the mindfulness and the heartfulness of that knowingness, to go through life, create life, experience life in very uplifting, meaningful, joyful ways, moment to moment to moment to moment, without interruption, without exception. It's uplifting and enjoyable and meaningful, the life that they live every moment and they're always able to be mindful that they are all that is connected to all things and that their worth and other experiences and other seemingly outside beings and life forms are also of infinite worth so that's you know a basis yeah. of what i get from them excellent i don't want to ask too many questions i want to get to get to your channeling but okay. there's it's so interesting to find out your perspective of how you uh, interact with the, him and how you feel about him and um, how he feels about humanity as well. That is really cool. Um, he, does he ever talk about humanity to you? Earth humanity? The idea yeah. is they are humans and there's Earth humans on Earth, Yael humans, variety of other extraterrestrial civilizations that are human. So when you say humanity to me, I'm thinking, okay, you, you, Earth humanity. So is your question, what is, how does he feel about humans on Earth? Is that the idea? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's a part of his life. It's a part of who he is. The idea with what you put out is what you get back. The one is the all, the all is the one. So he sees humans on Earth as an expression of himself. Um, he is an expression of the humans on Earth. And so facilitating earth humans ability to rekindle to remember our actual nature is something that is a great joy for him to be a part of facilitating earth humanity's remembrance of our actual nature and he certainly has a very deep connection deep bond with us and you could talk about historically, like the ideas of timelines, past, present, and future, the connection that the Yael civilization has with the Earth human civilization in terms of timelines of that matter. You could get into, he understands also not only those connections, but also connections that have to do with the soul connections. The, we talk about soul groups. He understands that Earth humanity is a part of the Yael human soul group. And Absolutely. that's something that is very dear to him so the earth humans are very dear to him for those reasons and from those perspectives also but with those thoughts and emotions i think i'll have you just bring him in and we'll talk to him and ask him some questions thank sure. you so much yes um okay. thank you uh, thank you for being here and um we look really look forward to meeting i is it i Ishua. Ishua. Excellent. But Ishua, you can say Ishua too. He just he'll say Ishua, but he's okay with Ishua. Okay, very good. I always say Ishua. <laughs>
Because he does. <laughs> I will say Aisha was as well then. Okay. Up to you, sure. Okay, so I'll step aside and I'll bring Aisha through. He may have a few messages. They may come all at once. They may come throughout the one hour together here. And if any of you, uh, if he opens it up, I think he will to questions, suggestions, answers, sharing. You know, feel free when you have, if you want to, to step in. However you guys organize the questions and uh, whatever comes up, feel free to talk to him. So I'll step aside. Before, and before, you, before you do that, I just want to let the people in the, that are here know that uh, be uh, very polite to one another and don't uh, talk over each other. And um, whenever you have a question, uh, please let me know so that I can call on you. Okay, thank you. Very well. Wonderful it is to be here with you all in these bloody moments to gather in this day of our time. How are you? We are Great, well. Thank, thank you. you for joining us. Thank you. It is a joy for the ice of the IL civilization, a human civilization, very connected, very deeply connected to the earth human civilization. It is a joy for me to have opportunity to share in this timing with you, to share in this fashion with you, to share in this way, in this form of communication, so that together in this timing we can explore more of the infinite that we all are, more of the unconditional love that is all of our actual nature. And with that in mind, with that in heart, with that in awareness of being together in this moment, I will briefly present a few ideas about our civilization for those of you who may be new to the idea of the Yael human civilization. We do live in what you might think of as your galaxy. We do not live in your solar system. We do have a couple of planets from which we are originating. You could say born from in that idea of planet of origination. The names not to come through in this timing, for it is not time for them to come through in this format. The idea is, you could say one is approximately 4.7 roughly light years away from the idea of traveling at the speed of light, yes, however it is a slightly different dimensional frequency, so you would not be able to pin it down with the idea of telescopes or instruments of, of observation at this timing. There is understand for us, your civilization, a part of our civilization, there is understand a time and our history that would be passed to us, passed even to you in a sense. Where some of our Yael human civilization branched out into space, truly to explore, truly to develop new civilizations, to become new forms, new expressions of human beings, to evolve into new forms, to have new experiences, new structures, new ideas, new thoughts, new heartfelt families 
And in that, you could say Earth humans are a outgrowth of those of our civilization that branched out, that went out to explore, in a sense. And you then are one of those who have evolved into what you are aware of who you are at this day and time in your current awareness. Having, in that sense, come from our civilization to your present point of awareness, you have gone through many transformations, many alterations. Some of those are evolutionary, some of those are rather natural, some of those are through the idea of genetic alteration, some of those of your, are of your own intentional conscious design. All of them are of your superconscious design. Any and all alterations to your genetic structure from the time you have left our civilization to your present Earth human state are a result of your own conscious and or superconscious choices to make those changes, genetic alterations, adjustments, explorations experimentations, as well as the natural evolutionary changes that come from choosing to live on a different planet than the one you came from originally that you were with us upon. When you move to a different planet, you are subjected to different forces, different energies, and this will change the nature of the physical specimen upon that planetary embodiment. And these are an idea or a way or a reason for evolutionary physiological change, emotional, mental evolutionary change. There then is an example of, or an idea or some brief explanation of how you as Earth human civilization have change to be who you are today from who you were when you were us, Yahyel of the Yahyel civilization. So understand there are others on other planets who were a part of those who originally left the Yahyel civilization that are on other planets that you are not aware of. Some of them do come to Earth at times and interact with you. Some of those are more the idea of greys that have been more involved in genetic manipulation in a way most of you would only be aware of on a super conscious level, not consciously saying, yes, I would like you to do this. Take me up in your spaceship and do this adjustment. Most of you who have had that occur, it is more on a super conscious level. Um, but it is still something on that level you are agreeing, choosing, accepting, and actually co-creating those adjustments. So you are not a victim. You are not being taken against your will in any sense of your actual superconscious beingness. So I want to share some of those ideas with you so you can begin more easily, more comfortably, accepting the idea of interacting with our civilization and other extraterrestrial civilizations to begin to understand that you don't have to think of your interaction with us and with others and how you got to be where you are in, Earth in a way that you are timid or concerned or frightened or fearful that there are these other civilizations that are going to come and take you over, going to eat you, going to control you. This then is something you do not need to have a fear about, a concern about, stress over, feel frightened of. You certainly may, if you find that exciting, go right ahead and be frightened about those illusions. We are not going to do anything to take you over to frighten, to manipulate you, to control you. This is of zero interest to the Yahyel civilization. What is of 100% interest to us is to begin to uh, let you understand you do not need to have the fear of our civilization or these other extraterrestrial civilizations that are only you from a different point of view, expressions of the one that is the all, the all that is the one. And the more you understand that you are all that is, and all that is is you, the more you truly open up and understand this, 
the more obvious it becomes to you, the more empowered you feel, the less fear you will have that somebody is out there controlling you or taking you up on a ship and manipulating you and turning you into some DNA manipulated monster Frankenstein type creature. The more you understand your actual nature, the more that fear subsides. It just happens naturally, if you will, because you begin to connect to more of the consciousness of who you are. And in that connecting to the consciousness of more of who you are is the realizing that you are us and we are you. And you do not have any reason to manipulate yourself through the idea of other extraterrestrial civilizations coming in and overpowering you or hiding in the shadows and manipulating you through governmental structures as they are doing this to you. The more you understand you are the infinite, the more you truly open up to this idea that the one is the all, the all is the one. You are the one that is the all, the all that is the one. All of the people on your planet are you, are the one that is the all, the all that is the one. All one, one. All for one, one for all. The more you open up to this, the more ways, for there are an infinite number of ways that this knowledge begins to fill in your awareness. The more you begin to understand this, realize this, feel this, experience this. So it isn't just an intellectual statement that you can debate or philosophize about. It becomes obvious experientially to you. And in this way, you are actually, you could say, tasting the pudding in that idea that the proof is in the tasting of the pudding. When you put out that you are of infinite value and you are the one that is the all, the all that is the one, so choose to create positive experience for yourself in which you are in control of your experience of life. You are in control of how you open up to extraterrestrial civilizations, such as the Yael. You are in control, and the more you believe and put that out, the more you get back knowing and experiencing and tasting that reality, the more therein you can begin to choose to create and co-create with us and other extraterrestrial civilizations uplifting experiences positive, powerful, empowering experiences with us and others, other extraterrestrials. You begin to know this is true about yourself and you begin to realize how to co-create positive experiences with us and others. And in that creating and co-creating positive experiences with us from your true self, empowered self, fear of extraterrestrial civilizations is not a part of your experience anymore. You no longer are looking over your shoulder, concerned that the sound in the closet at night might be the boogeyman or an extraterrestrial or they trying to control and manipulate you and genetically alter you into some helpless servant slave of they. So, oh, that illusory story that they are out there trying to control and manipulate you and alter your DNA is a fascinating story. It is something that is an illusory story. It is a play, like a play on a theater, like a movie. And its value is equal to any and all other stories you could be creating, equal to any and all stories I could be creating. The idea is, understand, it is the story that there is somebody out there controlling you, a disempowering story. It is equal to, the, the value of it is equal to any and all other stories as far as, far as the infinite is concerned. But it disempowers you because when you put out that you're being controlled by they, you get back more experiences that they are controlling you. And you can even start, well, how are they controlling? Oh, well, guess what? There's an infinite number of ways you can create an illusory story of how you're being controlled. 
because the infinite has an infinite number of ways of creating experience. So if you want to continue believing the illusory story that they are in charge, so you can't really do much, the more you put that out, the more you get back experiences that will confirm that illusory reality. So that is a disempowering idea. Therein, you can begin to know that they only have control over you as long as you continue to put out that they have control over you. Because what you put out is what you get back. Understand within each and every one of you is the understanding that you are the one in charge. You are the one that is the all, the all that is the all. So the more you choose to experience and feel that reality and to create, to experience, to tune into the reality of interacting with other people who are aspects of you, the one that is the all, the all that is the one, the more you choose to put out the desire to experience interacting with others in all forms of life in an uplifting, joyous, meaningful, rewarding, pleasant, exciting, fascinating way, the more you will get back that experience, the more you tune in to that reality. And it is a joyful reality. It is a joyous reality that is ever-changing in ever-fascinating way. Fulfilling ways, meaningful ways, meaningful for you and others you are interacting with, others who are you. You are the others, others are you. So that is just a general idea. That is just one way of looking at this idea. There are an infinite number of ways of looking at this. So you don't need to think there is just one way to get to this place if it is a way or a place you would like to be experiencing being within. Follow your inner self, your inner heart. Tune in to that you that is already in that place of knowingness and you will feel more of this, know more of this. So whenever you are doing or acting or thinking or behaving in a way where you feel a greater sense of joy or the most excitement or fun or fulfillment, follow in that direction, move in that direction, create in that direction, because that feeling is you in more of that reality in which you are already existing, already knowing this, experiencing this, living with other people on earth, humanity on earth, in which you're all very connected, very spontaneous together, very supportive together, very nurturing of one another. All of you having all that you need to feel joyfully supported, to know you are co-creating as the creator of your experience with other aspects of you, as the one that is the all, the all that is the one. Understand, feel, accept, tune in more into this place. And it becomes the reality you get back. It becomes the reality that you tune into. You are the infinite. Feel the infinite in each moment. Tune in. Do that which is of greatest joy as best you can in each moment. And that feeling of what is of greatest joy is letting you know you are taking action more in alignment with that you that already knows you are the infinite. Already is interacting with everybody on earth in this fulfilling, fascinating, nurturing way. Reality. Because that reality already exists here and now where everything always exists. All right here and now. All of these other dimensions are part of stories, illusions that you create. Plays, theaters, movies, scripts songs, artistic expressions, levels, stories, octaves, little variations, so that you can have different experiences. But it is all here and now. 
And the here and now you, that is interacting with the here and now earth humanity that is fun, fulfilled, fascinated, nurturing itself and all exist here and now. So the more you act, think, feel, interact with others in a way that is of greatest joy for you, the more you are tuning in to that you that is here and now, that is earth humanity in greatest joy support of one another, fulfillment with one another, co-creation with one another, in zero fear, in 100% empowered creatorness, interactiveness with one another, and with our civilization, with other extraterrestrial civilizations that are, again, simply expressions of you, the one that is the all, the all that is the one. Find this knowledge which is within you, that is within every cell within your biology. This knowingness that you are the infinite, you are the one that is the all, the all that is the one. It is always within every aspect of your being, this knowledge. Allow yourself to activate that knowledge that exists within every component of every aspect of your DNA, within the molecules, within the atoms, where the atoms become non-physical into the non-physical realm, and back from the non-physical realm, back into the physical, back into the atoms, back into the molecules, back into the physiology, into the emotions, into the mentality, into the brain. To all of your physiology, to all of your body, to all of your thoughts, to all of your feelings, all contain this knowledge that you are the infinite. You are the one that is the all, the all that is the one. You are creating each and every moment you are experiencing to what you most strongly choose to put out and thus get back or tune into. Choose to be the creator of your reality, knowing that you can in each moment create any number of, from the infinite number of fun, fulfilling, fascinating experiences of coexisting with others on earth and others and other civilizations, such as the Yahyel civilization. This, the more you believe, the more you activate these knowledge banks, knowledge centers within every aspect of your DNA, every component of your biology, every cell within your self-beingness, the more you choose to put out activating that, the more you get back experiences where more of that of you is activated. Open, listening, interacting. Relating a relationship that you are is functioning more and more the way you are designed to function. And this then allows you to interact with our and my relation, ability, ship, ability, relationship, ability. It is what will begin more and more as more of you find this place within yourself that you'll begin to see more of our ships that we can use in your physical world to relate to you. So, thank you for allowing, for tuning in to this reality that I may share this idea with you, my dear soul, brothers, sisters, family, parents, children, thank you. At this time, do one or more of you have a story or a sharing or a question you would like to interact with me in this ship of relation? Yes. First of all, we want to just thank you for being here and being with us today. We appreciate it so much. What you have been saying is very enlightening, and we welcome you to the group. Thank you. Much love. Always, dear ones, in all ways. And now I will ask Max if there's any questions out there. Kina, Kina are you ready? Can you go? Kina? Hello. Hello. Hi, everyone. Hi, Hi. everyone. Uh, so uh, you advise to see ourselves as uh, ET uh, instead as human to activate more easily? You, for us, are extraterrestrial. 
I suggest to know that you are infinite creator of your experience. You are the one that is the all, the all that is the one. You are of infinite worth and value, infinite worth and value, infinite worth and value, always here and now. You are. Allow yourself to tune in to that. Feel that. Meditate within that knowledge. There are an infinite number of ways to feel that you are infinite worth. To feel, to know, to sense, to think, to observe, to experience that you are of infinite worth. There are an infinite number of ways you can experience this. Meditate to this. Feel more of these ways to experience Invite more of these ways to move into your awareness that you can experience this more and more, that it may permeate your moment to moment experience, day to day, or moment to moment. So there is no one way to connect more. There are an infinite number of ways. To know there are an infinite number of ways to connect to your infinite creator worth. Put that out to know that there are an infinite number of ways. Put that out to know that there are an infinite number of ways. Put that out and invite that you begin connecting more and more to those infinite number of ways. Put that out that you want to connect to more and more of those infinite number of ways to realize you are of infinite worth and value, to feel, to sense, to understand that. Put out this desire. Tune in to this you that knows this. Intend to be feeling that you are of infinite worth. Put out that you intend to interact with others, that you are interacting with others that understand they are of infinite worth. Intend that you are a beacon of light of this knowledge, activating others, the knowledge that is within all of you, activating that knowledge within others. Intend that you are a beacon of light, that you are an activator, activating this knowledge within other beings, humans, and others on your planet, whether it is your pets or those in the forests or the jungles. There are an infinite number of ways. Invite yourself to facilitate the ways that are for you of greatest joy, greatest sense of fun. Does that so, answer your question? Yes. So you live uh, in your world without uh, drama, without fear. Isn't it not uh, boring? Ask that you live without drama and fear in ways that are always exciting for you. If you are always experiencing excitement, boredom does not exist in your experience. Understand within the infinite, there are an infinite number of ways to experience boredom. So go at it if that is a joy to you. Believe that you have to be bored or only sometimes be bored. There are an infinite number of ways to experience life that are always exciting and fun and meaningful, that are absent of boredom, 100% free of boredom. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, thank you so much. You are welcome, dear one. Thank you for the question. Go ahead, Max, so there are other questions. Yeah, yeah there is uh, Ray, then Gabe, then Leela. Ray goes first. Hello. Who? Ray. Ray. Ray, you're muted. You have to turn him on. Let me. Oh, maybe. There's... Yes. Let me try. Let me try. Thank you, Jim. Ray. You have to uh, enlighten his square there. It's still muted. Okay. Let yeah, me ask Ray. Mute. Let me ask Ray. Oh, okay. Ray, you're good now. Ray. Ray, are you on? He's I'm still dark. Now. All right. I will ask Ray's question. So the question is about laughter and humor. What's the difference and similarity between Yael laughter and human and Earthlings laughter and humor? 
We may laugh about different things. The feeling, in a sense, is similar, could be said. Biologically, it opens you up to more of your infinite knowledge, in a sense. In a awareness of the illusory, the story, in that moment the person is playing out. So you tune in to the knowledge of your actual self in perspective, in relation to the illusory moment the person is creating, and the realization of how silly that is erupts with the laughter, in a sense. This is only one idea of what laughter can be. There are many ways and reasons for laughter. So the idea is for us biologically and for you biologically, laughter can serve a very similar function, a connecting more to your actual nature in a perceived illusory moment, in a sense. A realization that that was just a silly little story. And wasn't that fun that we were able to create that game? So that is one way of looking at humor. We enjoy laughter. We enjoy the laughter that you have. Understand that there are times observing, interacting with Earth humans that you find something funny and you are laughing. And it is, as you know, perhaps contagious to those present in your room, they begin to laugh a little too, and that for us can get us laughing as well. So there is a very close connection, similarity, wavelength of reality when you are laughing to bring us into laughter. And understand at times when we are laughing, if we have one or more of you in a resonant group with us, you begin to laugh as well. So the laughter is a place of common ground, of resonant, coherent experience, sharing, bonding. Laughter for us, laughter with you. Laughter for you, your laughter with us. Resonant sharing. A real physiological state of rapport, bonding. So those are just a few ideas of laughter. Nice. Um, Gabe is next. Thank you. Hello, Asha. It's been a long time. I just want to say thank you for all the good information and like. I see we are a family now coming together, you know, and learning about each other. So it's really cool. Yes, it is a joy to see you interacting in a family of it brings you joy and dear strength, dear one. Thank you for moving forward in the ways that you have been, for taking the steps, taking the time, allowing yourself to realize you can move forward, you can grow stronger. You are doing this. You are empowering yourself and creating a greater joyful experience, connecting with others in ways that enrich your heart and their hearts as well. Thank you, dear one. Much love with you and of you always. And it's going to be really exciting sharing our world with your world and seeing how you share your world with our world. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And we can actually start doing it bit by bit right yeah. now. Yeah. You are, yes. Um, next, uh, thank you. Next is Leela. Hello. Yes. Hello. Yes. Hi, Ashua. Hello, Leela. Leela. <laughs> what personal talents do you have? specific to you I, I enjoy joy sharing sharing experience that one person has with another person who doesn't speak the same language 
perceive don't speak the same language. For example, in your world, let's say you have someone who only speaks Spanish and you have someone that only speaks French. Oh, I would facilitate if the person in Spanish wanted to connect with the person who speaks French, I would facilitate the person who speaks Spanish's ability to communicate with the person who speaks French and the one who speaks French's ability to speak to the one who speaks Spanish. This is a bit like a translator. I work with translating not so much in a spoken language way, but in an inner heart soul way. Humans have a fantastic ability to communicate with one another on a soul heart level in which spoken languages aren't necessary to convey experience, to convey feelings, to convey thoughts, to share experience, to share, to co-create together. I, in that sense, facilitate people of different, in a sense, soul groups, ability to connect with one another on their soul level. So I am a bit like a soul group, soul level translator. Wonderful, cool. There's a question here in the room. Uh, Angela has a question. I just wanted Angela. to know. Yes, what your connection is, if any, with the colonies. That is a story to unfold. More than I can say in this moment, it is exciting. It is supportive for all of those of us and you and others. There are more than the Yael civilization interacting with the colonies, as you say. It is a way to experience life, enrichment of self, mm -hmm. validation of self, fascination with others by talking about extraterrestrial learning about extraterrestrials, finding confirmation through exploring experience with extraterrestrial consciousnesses. It is for us an opportunity to be a part of this experience. You're connecting and remembering more of your connection with extraterrestrial beings. The colony, facilitating a way to experience coming back into awareness of extraterrestrial reality and the colonies is facilitating this remembrance in a way that is fun can be exciting and fascinating something you look forward to doing something that creates a sense of camaraderie fellowship connectedness sense of joy, sense of value, a sense of love, a sense of worth in ways that are fulfilling for you, enjoyable, heartfelt for you more for you in a path, in alignment, in resonance, which is more true to your actual beingness as part of the infinite. We, I, enjoy and see interaction with the colonies through this lens, through this opportunity that it offers for it is an opportunity it is a vehicle it is a space for traveling in this experience through this awakening activating it the colonies is in a sense its own time spatial space share 
for relationships. Awakening your relationship with your actual nature, which includes extraterrestrial nature. Yes, uh, that's a little bit of our and my interest in connection to the colonies. The human colony dot org group gathering fellowship yeah. does that answer your question dear one yes it does. she said yes thank you and that was a very unique perception of the colonies and a very astute yes. um about your family life um do you have a family unit or do you are you more communal on your planet there are family units and both communal and family the communal is a family very much so it is then a oneness of family I know my biological children and I know children that are not my biological children as one they perceive me as one being they know those who are not of biologically connected to me they know i am like a father or a brother or a son as i know my children as a son as a daughter as i know the community those who are not biologically can be like a son or a daughter but i know they are not actually biologically of mine the veil, the difference is very, 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 very thin. Really, the only difference is I can say, this is of my biological offspring, this one is not. Other than that, they are all one family for me. I will do for the one not biologically that I will do for the one that is biological. I will hold and support both equally in my heart in my mind can i help you can i help you my biological my non-biological can i help you i know you help me both for you are both me expressions of me the one that is the all the all that is the one i support you both i am supported by you both what i put out is what i get back and that is the idea, one way of allowing experience and perception of family and community. Do you relate, understand to that idea? Can I yes. be more specific for you? No, that was a wonderful explanation. I hope humanity gets closer to that idea as well. Earth humanity is yes thank you for your intention the earth humanity does exist in a reality where this is occurring and i perceive along the lines of your desire you and your experience of the timeline you perceive yourself earth humanity to be at is moving in to this time in which it is already here and now so thank you for expressing your desire to put out and thus get back being in this reality. Um, thank you. That is there. David has a question about pain. David, voice up, speak up. Hello, Hello, David. Hi, how are you? Very well, thank you. And how are you, David? Well, getting much better with the help and guidance of, of everyone with everything I've been going through. Very well, David, of infinite value and infinite worth, infinite joy, infinite joy, David. What would you like to share or ask of me? 
Um, I have a friend that reached out today. I did some healing work on her. She still has a, a lot of pain that she's going through uh, from a car accident a while, quite a while back. And I just thought maybe I could ask to see if there's anything that may help her besides the healing work that I do, or if you can check on her. Her name's Missy. Thank you. Do you need a whole name? No, thank you. Understand that you in your world, as we can in ours, create the idea of a moment-to-moment -moment scenario. It's very real experientially of pain physically. It is. In creating that hard, it can be a challenge, doesn't have to be, but usually you create so that it is seemingly hard to let go of the experience that seems to be causing pain physically. Therein, that for me is not something I can take away from her or any of you that choose to create this idea. It is part of your choice to create, to go through this. It is something you are doing on Earth, human experience at this time, to have accidents and create physical pain. It is a choice to create this and is equal to any and all other choices that any and all other civilizations could be creating. Your idea then, let her have her experience of pain if it is that is what she wants to choose to create. You can, I would suggest, share some ideas with her and let her do with it as she may. The ideas as I have been sharing that she is of infinite value, infinite worth, infinite joy, infinite potential to create, experience, and tune into a reality where she is not in pain because that reality does exist for her. You can talk to her about that, share that idea with her. However she responds, be open to it. Observe how she responds. Learn from how she responds. Let yourself understand why and how she's responding to that that in the future you may begin more to convey in similar healing opportunities this knowingness already. You approach someone who is in pain with the intention to help heal them. No, it is simply a scenario they are creating. Bring the understanding that they can move through that pain. They can, in a sense, heal that illusory belief that is creating that pattern of pain perceived and tune themselves out of it, realign their thoughts and beliefs, put out new thoughts and beliefs that know they are not pain, not actually needing to be on that plain dimension of pain. They can tune into a plane, into a dimension in which they are feeling fine, feeling good, feeling empowered physically. Put that unknowingness into your healing therapy moment sharing if you want to, it's your choice. And beyond that, below that, above that, within that, without that, around that, before that, behind that, to the left of that, however you want to think of this, go back to her, be with her again. Let your eyes look into her eyes. Meditate with her, eyes to eye contact. Feel love that you have for who you are as an infinite being of unconditional love. The infinite, the one that is the all, the all that is the one. Existence, unconditional love. You feel this infinite love that you are. Look into her eyes. Let it flow, this feeling, into her eyes. Say to her, I am here to help heal you. I love you. Healing you. I love you. I love you. I am being pain-free. Love. Moving in through the eyes, into your beingness to facilitate less painful feeling, to facilitate 
lifting you off of the pain plane into a plane where you feel joy. Feel the love that you are moving through your eyes, into her eyes, into her being. Let yourselves be in eye-to-eye -eye contact, moving the love together five, six minutes minimum. You can go longer. You can do this more than once with her if you want. If she's not comfortable, if it seems too unusual, too strange, perhaps you can do it in your own space of meditation, imagining you're doing this with her, as if she was actually there in the room with you. However, I feel it would be much more effective if you could do this actually with her in the room with you. Her, you, together, eye to eye, sharing this unconditional love, lifting her off of the pain plane, at her own timing, in her own willingness to accept redefining the belief she has that had been holding her into this pain plane, into this experience of a car crash. Give it time. You can do this with others in the future, if you wish, as well as a healing technique to remove, to retransmit beliefs that a person may have, a client may have, to lift them off of the pain plane, whether physical or mental or emotional pain plane. Does that answer your question? That was, yes, that's very helpful. Um, what about if there is a boyfriend in the room that, uh, he's a good friend of mine, and just some of the things that you described on looking into her eyes and tell her I love you, those, I don't see how that would good with her boyfriend there like he might not feel good about that like how is, would I go around that is this an idea we can explore in this moment to consider a possibility the boyfriend wouldn't feel good if love is being shared with this girl supposedly he would like to feel have feel better can he not appreciate love is beaming into her experience perhaps he is the one co-creating some of the pain not to say that he is but possibly he would be open to this i would love to see you looking into his eyes first and do this meditation with him first and then let him know the reason you want to do this with him is because you want to do this with her and he can be present ask after you explain this to him, that you would like to do it with him first, so he can understand and have experience with what it is, so he doesn't have to feel bad that you want to share activation of love consciousness with the girl he, you would think, is in love with and wants to see become pain-free, you would think. What do you feel or think about this idea I am sharing with you? It's just an idea I'm sharing with you. What do you think about that idea? I cannot hear you. I think it was wonderful. Yes, it is Very mind good. changing. Oh, uh, we, we ran out of our time. The hour is over. Very good. We have enough time to finish with this one, if it is possible, if you would like to. Okay. Okay. And I'm, I'm back. It was muted for a second. Yes. I could not hear either. How do you feel about that idea? Um, it's okay with me. I just think from what I know about him that he, he wouldn't go for that. Um, he doesn't it's believe. all right if you won't go for that. He can empower you as a healer if you can't find it within yourself to somehow just express that as a possibility to do this. Yeah, and he, he does can. have MS. So he, he needs help too, he has MS? 
Love yes. The roses. Yeah. So feel about this idea in your own meditative space. Feel into a reality in which you express this idea to him. Feel into a reality in which he opens up to it surprisingly to you. Feel into a reality in which you are able to then do this with her. <coughs> Feel into a reality in which he begins to strengthen her own internal healing ability so that she begins more quickly to step off of a pain plane. And this can work for him as well. You can let him know that this idea can facilitate greater removal for him from his MS situation as well. Not to say to him that it will guarantee, but to know that, let him know that it can facilitate for him some healing of that situation. So, imagine this happening successfully. Imagine that reality manifesting for you. And that thus then allows more because what you put out is what you get back more that you then actually tune into the reality where this does actually unfold for you. Do you understand this suggestion? Yes, put the intention out that this is completed and will be successful, that it can happen. Yes, and you can imagine it unfolding. You can imagine it step by step actually happening as though you are playing out, imagining as if it happens as if you are an actor going through the roles, imagining that it is unfolding and then actually approaching after you've played it out in your imagination a few times, after you've put it out there a few times, then you go actually to him that the actual physical unfoldment be more in resonant with the imagination as if scenario you are playing out in your imagination. Okay. You have the ability to function in this way, to manifest as a healer in this way. It doesn't have to be with these two. It can begin with these two. But in the future, you can consider this as a way, as a technique to add to how you function in that capacity. If it is a joy for you, dear one, so thank you. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Yay. Love and light. Yes. Thank you. Love and light. Very well. I understand the time is up. Yes. There is another comment. Uh, Ray says, just want to thank them for coming today through the channeler as they have been reaching out to me through many ways recently. So much joy. want to share my joy and thanks. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Much joy. I do as well. It was very inspirational. Beautiful. Wonderful, dear ones. Joyful to be here with all of you in this way. Thank you. <clears throat> Much love to each and all of you in this timing. In each timing in which you are aware and interacting with us in this way. Much love to all of you in all ways. Always. At this time, I will step aside. Thank you. And good evening and good day of your time. How'd it go? Welcome back. It went Welcome great. Welcome back. Thank you. Good to be back. I'm coming back. <laughs> it went great. Thank you very much. Oh, well, thank you. It was, it was amazing. You. Some very good information. Well, Excellent. The joy to be able to share and interact with you guys, your group. And thank you. Wonderful. 
I hope you. you'll uh, join us again sometime. Yes. Look forward to that. Thank you, Jim. Thank, Thank you, Max. Thank you, Gabriel. Thank you. Thank you, Ray. I don't remember everyone's names. Astrid, David, Pete. Thank you, Astrid and David. Infinite. Infinite. Lila. Lila. And Ray. Pete and Ray. Yep. Thank you. So, Sean, if, if someone wants a session or anything or find out more about you, how can they do that? Oh, thank you, Gabriel. So it's ishua.com. I S H U W A dot com. That's the website. You can find out what I'm up to. Yes. Sure. Thank you. That's great. I do one session. I will I will uh, get in touch with you. Okay. Well, I'll be in touch with you guys again. And I guess it's just uh, You're welcome to stay if you like. Now we'll invite Jim to channel. Okay, well I've I've got I've got to head out. But All right. you have a wonderful afternoon. Jim, wonderful channeling for you. I enjoyed having that. We had a group channeling there. We had with Rob in the channel panel a few months back. It was great to have you with us. Look forward to more of that with you in the future. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for lifting our energies. When I started, it was raining. Now it's shining. Uh, sun is shining. Oh, okay. yes. <laughs> California is happy to have some rain. It's good to have sun too, though. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Take care. Right. Much love. Beautiful. Thank you. Take care. Appreciate Bye. it so much. All right, Jim. It's hard to switch from uh, a host seat and uh, um, to a channeler seat, but um, <laughs> it's possible. Well, um, I know Lakesh wants to come through. So yeah, I want Lakesh too. Yeah, it, it I will be cool if you come through. Lee for uh, to come through. So I I didn't know who was coming through until about three quarters of the way through uh, Sean's uh, talk with, I mean, Aishawa's talk. And uh, mm -hmm. it was, he was saying, oh, I want to talk. I want to talk. So it Thanks. will be Lakesh at least at first. So is everybody okay, like okay with that? <laughs> Excellent. Okay, very good. <laughs> Give me one moment to meditate and I will be back. Is there any questions before I start? I think I'm good. Alrighty then. Yeah, a line up in the in the text chat on the on the side if you on the if you can type there, type your topic of your question so we can kind of prioritize and combine them together. All right, very good. I will be back in a little while. Have a wonderful session. I hope you all enjoyed uh, Sean and Aishawa. I thought they were great and had a lot of really good stuff to say. So and the vibration was wonderful. Yeah, his vibration was great. So uh, I will bring the cash and we'll see what he has to say. I think he wants to answer questions, but we'll see. Talk to you later. Max, if I have a question, I'll just let Lakesh know. Yeah. Hello, how are you? Hey, like a long time no year. Good to be here. I always love coming to the group. It's a wonderful time. What's new in your uh, space of uh, consciousness? We are moving forward as usual. We are reaching out to other places and learning more about the universe. Of course, we are always learning, learning, learning. And we are actually learning more about humanity in the sense that we know how you feel and how your telepathy is coming along. We have contacted you in a greater way in some, in uh, many uh, different aspects. We can feel you better. 
So now we know more how you feel and more how you think. So it is a wonderful thing. We are constantly studying humanity. So therefore, it and is you're studying you. Yes, you are studying me as well, I'm sure. And there, there are those around me that are also channelers, but they may not come through Jim, so you may not know them. We have Kalish, which Gabriel knows about, and G. Georgin, who comes, um, uh, who is also called Georgette. And uh, we have uh, oh, several from our planets that are now channeling through people on your planet. So it is a lovely thing. So that is good news. We are, we are uh, extending our population to the channeling world, to your world. Excellent. Uh, is there the person who visited me and was in my body about two years ago? Uh, that was Kalish. Oh, so he is in the same room? Yes, he's in this group. What happens with Kalish, though? Kalish has never really spoken through a channeler, but he goes into the bodies and he uh, experiences things and causes experiences with humans. And uh, he has done that with uh, Gabriel, he has done that with you and a couple others, that he comes into the body. Sometimes he comes in through the uh, southern regions and moves up, and sometimes he comes in through the sides. He's very unusual when he when he uh, comes to visit Earth. He, he likes to try new things, but he has not actually spoken to anyone on Earth yet. I invite him to visit me again and I invite him to speak to me directly. Kalish is very I, think to say time, I think the next time he comes through, he would like to speak. But he wasn't not he's okay. not much of a speaker. He didn't feel that that was his forte. He wanted to experience, just like I did when when we first got together. Remember how I wanted to experience so many things? Well, I've experienced many things in the human body at this time. But Kalish is like I was, except that he is even more so. He likes to ex experience the body, experience all the different functions of humanity. And he will uh, come to you at certain times, and maybe you will feel offended because he might come at inopportune times. However, it is only out of curiosity and not about public, private invasion. He is such a, a wonderful and curious being. <clears throat> yeah, I give him my permission again. But, Gabe, you wanted to say something? Ah, pardon? Kalish is very unusual being. Like He doesn't like being told how the universe wor work, really. He wants to, like, he has always his own way of doing things, so that's yeah, a lot absolutely. about him. Yeah, that's like me and you, right? <laughs> yes, he has his own ways to do things, but he is, um, I think he will speak eventually. So, but I, I'm, I'm just um, surprised he ha hasn't yet. He, he's, spoken his, he's, he's spoken his language right. through me. Oh, yes. Oh, wow. Did he speak it in your head or did he speak it out loud? No, I was channeling to you, I think. Ah, that's... You were channeling um, to me, Lakesh? Yeah, through Jim on a session and he ah, was speaking ah, to ah, ah. I see. I, yes, I wasn't aware that he did speak his language to you, or our language, I should say. And how, how did he do? You, you said that he... It was he speaking for me while I was. Talking. Ah, very good. So, so I, was, I wasn't sure that he had actually spoken. Uh, my memory as an older person sometimes is not so good. But I remember that he does go into the body and does many things. So uh, if he, but he has not spoken any English or any Swedish or anything like that. No, not that I know of. This is what I mean. He hasn't really communicated very well. But he will, I am sure. I have a couple of questions which I need to ask. Absolutely. One is from uh, Lewis, uh, our friend. Uh, and uh, 
uh, Jim and I received uh, um, a little, so that's kind of, that's what it is. And um, Lewis had some interesting uh, marks appearing on his body, like, um, like um, some uh, cut on his hand, uh, on his hand, and uh, it's starting to grow out. Um, can you look at it and uh, find out what it is? His name is Lewis? Yes, Lewis. And where is he? Um, somewhere in the United States. Oh, I will find him. One moment. There's a cut on his hand. Did you say there was a cut on yes, his yes. hand? Yes, it appeared, appeared from uh, without any reason, just, uh, I guess, at night. Ah, and he wonders if he has been abducted or something. We will check that out. There's not many abductions going on right now on this planet, on your planet, I should say, because they, um, the Galactic Council has forbidden it during this time of ascension. But there are some species that still are doing it without permission. But if they get caught, they will be in trouble. However, I will check that out and see what's going on. Moment, please. Thank you. Lewis Crowell. Yes, I know who that is. He is on the human colony. He has visited to the colonies at least once. Uh huh. Yes, there, it was not an abduction, but it definitely was a visitation. He did get visited by uh, the Greys. Not the Zeta uh, Greys, but the, another group of the Greys that, that are in your area. I do not know what they call themselves. Oh, the Elia Shondai Zendi, perhaps? I am not sure. Yes. And they are friendly, but they accidentally scratched him. But they were just doing some experimental things with him. And he is actually wanting these kind of experiments in his subconscious. He has asked for them. And so, therefore, he is very curious about uh, the gray species and many of the other species at this time. I'm not sure if he will... Uh, I wish he was here to speak to me so I could understand more what's going on with him and his curiosity. He asks if, uh, I just read this, his question here. Yes. He asks if it was Gurk Fitnir. No, it was not. Uh huh. And was, well, uh, was he taken physically away? Was he physically no, he taken? Wasn't taken? He wasn't taken away. That's not allowed at this time. And there's uh, some strict rules about this right now. However, I think they did visit him. They actually did visit him. And they were doing some experiments and some on him. And um, he, they accidentally scratched him. They did not mean to. But they do have some very sharp fingernails, some of them. Okay. Uh, thank you. The uh, second question is, I'm writing uh, a chapter about your race the blue uh, and uh, yes right and there is many other blue pleiadians so the name the blues and blue pleiadians is very generic and doesn't doesn't work as a as an identifier do you mind providing any more unique name which we could use a, a more unique name for our species the uh, yes. the short blue pleiadians let me see if if uh, we can use our planet name. We have not yet uh, divulged the name of our planet to you or the other two planets that we exist on, but um, perhaps that will help clear things up and make Thank things you. more specific. Coriantor. That would be the human pronunciation in English. Wonderful. Coriator would be the name of Planet One. 
instead of the X that we usually uh, send off, X1, X2, and X3, Oriator, Bellatai, and Zoret. Wonderful. Thank you very much. That helps a lot. X1, X2, X3. <laughs> so we'll use the name of the first planet as your race name. Yes, Coriator. <laughs> Well, Coriator. you could call us that if you would. The Coria, what would it be? Coriatorians? Yes. I would imagine that's a mouthful for some humans, but that's all right. Coriatorians it is. Yay, Coriatorians. Coriator. All, right. Um, all right. Thank you all much. Thank uh, you next much. is... Uh, is uh, Yes, Lila, Lila, you're muted so far. Go ahead. Is there a question from me? Can you hear yes. me? Okay, yes, I, I can hear you very well. Okay, I got two questions. Could you tell me my DNA alien DNA percentage? And second, what is my connection to the colony? What is your connection to the colonies, the Gurkfin yes. near colonies? Um, you have been there a couple times. What your connection is, is that you are a healer. You have healing energy in your hands, in your eyes, in your uh, forehead, in your heart. There's a lot of healing within you, and you they use you on colony six to do a lot of healing, at least for... You seem to be able to heal um, you yells very well. And you are able to also uh, connect with the tall blue Pleiadians uh, in a very special way as, as well. You, d you do not seem to have that great of ability with humans, however. But you do have a great ability with other species. Now, let me tell you something. Your talents for you, your connection with humanity is a little bit off, and that's why. You, you don't feel exactly right with them sometimes, and your healing energy is a little uh, off-put off because you don't believe their belief systems are strong enough to accept what you have to offer. But do not worry. Your belief systems can help overcome their belief systems. So you see, as you go into a healing process, no matter if it's Reiki or whatever it is you call it, make sure that your belief systems are functioning properly, that you're equally in balance, that your chakras are good. And when you prepare yourself, before going into a, a, a uh, healing session, then you can influence the people that are there as clients or as patients. And when you speak to them and say, help me with this, involve them with your healing. Let them know that you are a good healer, that you have confidence, and that their understanding of healing will be part of their own healing process. Perfect. Do you like that? I think it's, it's, I am definitely off with humans, that's for sure. Yes, I know that. But when you come to the colonies, they're standing in line, the Pleiadians and the Yugils, to have you touch them and heal them because you have such a great calming effect, first of all. And second of all, you relieve a lot of stress and anxiety. And then third of all, there are some pains in fourth dimension and other dimensions as well. And you can remove them very easily, especially on the neck area and lower back, just like humans. But there are some that come to you for headache problems, uh, especially the taller Pleiadians. They seem to have headache problems. I'm not sure why that is, because their physiology should be such that headaches would be the last thing that would be their problem. However, they do have some headache problems stemming from the uh, 
uh, actual thalamus. So it 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 is because the, the thalamus is act is overactive. Uh, the second question was, what is my DNA percentage? I am new on. What the is job. your DNA potential? A uh, percentage, like what kind of uh, uh, animals or aliens I am. Oh, what? Made what of. you? What do you have within you now? Yes. What is my DNA? You have some you yield. There is you yield and Pleiadian in you, and I think that's why you're able to uh, touch and heal them so easily. Mm. They're they're very much uh, affected by your just your um, demeanor when you are on the colonies. Your demeanor is very Pleiadian, by the way. Um, you have very you're very friendly, outgoing, gregarious. You're special. You treat every one as they are a special person and they love that and so those two things the you yell and Pleiadian are very strong with you and you came from your last life was a tall blue Pleiadian and you love that because look at your blonde hair there I love that I love the it's not real is it but anyway um it's real it's it's real hair but is it the real color yeah my father was blonde. Wonderful, because that's the same color you had when you were a blue Pleiadian. Uh, another question, only, only the last one. I don't want to uh, uh, make. Can you tell me my connection to my dragon? To your brother? Dragon, dragon, a dragon. Oh, to a dragon. You do have some dragon DNA in you. That is true. But, um, it's not your dominant. It's not your draw, dominant hybridization. You only have two percent. But remember, when you have two percent dragon, it's like having eight percent of anything else because it's very, very strong, and it it is overwhelming. But you don't really. You've only been concentrating on that as of recently. Yes. Before that, it was all really thinking about it. But you do have a great dragon connection with the white dragons yeah. of the, in Norway, Sweden. Well, they're actually red dragons, but they call themselves white dragons because they are the innocents. They call themselves the innocents. Yes, that's and what they I call themselves. Yes. Huh? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Um, and that's why they are the white dragons, yes. but they're actually red in color. And Ooh. underneath of uh, England and France, you have another set of dra uh, draconians where some of them are also red, but you're more connected with the ones under Norway and Sweden who call themselves the white dragons. Interesting. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you're you. Welcome. Next is Krelek, and then next it would be Gabe. Krelek? Very well. Krelik's blacked out. Krelik's blacked oh, out. Oh, hold on. I'll, I'll click the button. Yes, thank you. Krelik, try to unmute yourself again. Yes, I'm unmuted hey. now. Yes, there you are. Hello, Krelik. How is your visit to the canine world? Let's keep that private. What? Uh, I was I was going to I was going to ask if we could keep that version quiet. Keep that version private. I see. All right. Very well. Yes, uh, I had two questions. Um, my first one is, I know that I hear a lot about how people are not supposed to interfere with uh, with other, with the development of other extraterrestrial races, but I wanted to ask um, um, what actually happens if a more advanced race tries to interfere with a lesser advanced race. Has anyone ever done that before? Absolutely. But you understand, um, First of all, free will is involved in all things. And yes, it would be, there is such thing as right and wrong in these kinds of matter. When uh, there has been the interference by higher functioning races to lower functioning races for two reasons. One was to, to help them to survive. And it was in a very primitive state that they helped some uh, species to survive 
and they did not record it in their history. It was not part of their historical uh, memories. So therefore, it really did not change the future at all in the sense that they it was passed down as a great, uh, it was a great legend, of course, but it was not part of their true history. It was not written. So therefore, a couple of times, a higher species was able to help a primitive race because the planet was unstable and they thought that unfair that they a civilization should perish because of something in their terrestrial makeup that was not uh, balanced. So they balanced it for them and let this civilization move forward and become um, a greater species, if you will. Then there was another particular time when a higher species involved itself with a, a lower species and it only because the lower species was already aware of this higher species from um, for, for at least uh, 40 or 50 years. The, they were aware that they existed, but they really didn't interact. But the lower uh, functioning species called upon them to answer some very critical questions about their actual survivor survival and they chose to answer these questions for these particular people and it did help them now i'm not going to say if they survived or not but i can tell you that it was intervention of sorts with a higher species but it was only because they were asked to do so uh, okay, and I have one more question. Um, yes. when I, I was in the astral dimension earlier this morning while, I, while my body was in a sleep state, and I felt that I was trying to, I felt that a telepathic message was trying to be received to me, but I could barely hear the voice inside my head, and I'm not sure what it was the person was trying to say to me. And when I woke up, uh, I, I felt someone in my what room. Is, what is happening with that? There are many telepathic messages going to be coming to you. There's many telepathic messages that are out there. And, and the reason why they're very difficult to hear right now is because, remember, the physical affects the spiritual and the astral. So in the third dimension, you're experiencing a lot of, um, have, let me put it another way. Have you noticed the increase of uh, earthquakes on your planet? Yes. No, I have not. There has been a great increase of earthquakes and bad weather and many things on your planet since the fourth dimensional anomaly has left the solar system. The reason for this is because Earth energies are coming back to normal, but they were very shaken up and they were, they're now coming back into greater understanding of Gaia. Gaia has uh, taken in a great amount of fourth dimensional energy and she is very happy with that. However, her, the energies on the surface and just below the surface in, on Gaia are still very disturbed. And these should calm down by the middle of next month or it, it may take a little longer. However, these disturbances are affecting all kinds of telepathic messages, all kinds of thought processes. Uh, if people are feeling good, bad, indifferent, most people are very exhausted and tired. How many of you out there are experiencing great fatigue? Yes, many of us. So therefore, it is because the earth energies are drawing out your energy to, to uh, not on intentionally to cause you to be drained, but they are just so uh, um, uh, unsettled that it causes you to be drained because you're interacting with these energies. So 
come down eventually. But for right now, there's a lot of you out there that are going to be irritable and drained a little bit, but you can get through it. It's only another month. Uh, yes, okay, thank you. And um, do you know if I was visited earlier this morning by someone? Absolutely you were, and you know that you are, I believe. Oh, uh, do you uh, uh, do you know who the being was? It was a female uh, from the canine world. I don't know the name though. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, next is Gabe. Hello, Lakesh. Now I just remember from Krell here that someone in the morning I was sleeping and then. I heard on a, someone in the room said Gabriel really loud and I got really scared for some reason and I screamed out that I, who are and you and this? why are you here? This? this morning. Someone was there and you, um, and you screamed out? Yeah, who is it? And so I heard I some Gabriel, but I got really scared for some reason. One moment and I can check for you. Did you see anyone? No, I couldn't open my eyes at all. And uh, I couldn't move. Did you, That's all right, was, what kind of energy was it? Was it a negative feeling energy? I don't think so. It was more that I couldn't move. I got scared. It was just a surprise. Yes, and then I sc I screamed out in my room really loud, who is there, I think. Let me check for you, one moment. It was none of the regular suspects. Uh, it was not to occur to pa Pentium or anyone from Grupfik near. One moment. And it was not Kalish. It, it was a, however, it was an entity that was in the area, but I do not think it was an alien. I do think it was a human spirit, not a negative one. But it was one that is from your past, or one from your past lives. Um, and it just was there to check on you, to visit you. But did it touch you? What I perceived that he was in in the corner to, to the left of me right now. So he was in the corner of the room. Are you all right? Yes. Are you still frightened about it? No. Good, because he wasn't there to cause any harm or to frighten you, but to just check on you, and he was from a past life, he was a human spirit, and he is um, uh, someone that you will be uh, with in the Oversoul and in other lives, and have been with in several lives. He is wanting to let you know, ah, I understand now. He is wanting to let you know that you will not always be lonely and that you will not always be where you are now and doing the things that you are doing. Things will change, even though you have your belief system is not very strong about moving forward at this moment, you are moving forward, but you're feeling that you don't want this job anymore. You don't want the many of the things that are there in your life anymore. So he is there to let you know that these things will change. Yes. And it was really, it was kind of strange for me. I never heard someone say, said my name like that. Yes. He really knows who you are. And also maybe like the frightened was that I wasn't ready to connect to him. That's why I was couldn't do anything. 
He will be back, so don't be frightened. If you hear your name again, just listen. Perhaps he has a message or something to say that is important. Yes. I, I, I wonder if you have any messages for me. The, only, the messages that I have for you all deal with your present condition in life existences. And you are uh, going to move forward. That you do have gifts. They are not coming out right now because you are all third dimension, which so many people are right now. You're not alone. You're not alone in that at all. So uh, do not worry about it. It will pass. Let these third dimensional energies calm down on the earth, and I will um, I will visit you when they do calm down. So, uh, and also, I see that there is some imbalance in your energy systems and your chakras, so I will take care of that as well. Yeah, I have had headaches for a couple of days now. Yes, once the energy system is straightened out, you will have no more headaches, at least they won't be caused by that. Um, you do have a little bit of a pinched nerve in the neck, so I will work on that as well. And can can I, I want, I want to speak to you tonight, if it's possible, before I go to sleep, because Just I have something personal the, to share. The, the energies of your planet are such that you may not be able to hear me at this point. Let's wait until they calm down so I know that you will at least be hearing me and we won't be wasting our time. Yes, but I would try speaking to you. But... Very well, I will come close then. Yes. Thank you so much. Love you very much, Gabriel. Keep moving forward. Yay, Dave is next. Oh. I was, oh, beautiful. Yeah, I was. David, hello. Hello, Lakesh. Greetings. Yes, thank you. I have um, one, what, I wanted to ask, did you guys recently check about the process of healing of the brain? Um, yes. Yes, we I did. Felt, I felt we, it. Like I was standing there and I felt something in my head, so it was interesting. Yes, we, we check periodically because there was the attachment in the brain and uh, the healing is going very well in those areas, but still it remains to be, the, the synapse is not still not quite right. And uh, we need to get you back into remembering exactly the way you were before then so that you may uh, translate that into the future. If you understand what I'm saying, mm, kind of remembering will help heal it and put the, that that. Um... Yes, and also experience is going to be very helpful for you. You've been experiencing a lot of new things since the the extraction of the the being, and these are very positive actions. You're doing very well. That's that's wonderful. Um, so good to, to be able to speak with you again. I love, love your, your attitude and your energy and your words are also very powerful in teachings. Uh, Thank you. But yeah. remember, you are just as equal to me as I am to you. Oh, good. And, um, I thought that I asked a similar question, but I thought maybe you'd have a, a different perspective that might be pretty powerful about helping, um, heal people with pain i have a friend missy that is um in a lot of pain from a previous car accident and i thought maybe you might be able to yes let me tell you what i told i think it was lila or lila is that when you strengthen your own belief systems about healing this helps the client because your belief systems when you are close by when you know that you are confident that you believe that they can be healed, that healing is necessary. This translates into the atmosphere, into a place of healing with the individual, especially if you let them know that the healing is coming. 
uh, that they are part of, their energy is part of this healing and so the energies that you extend to them um from your own belief systems will help their belief systems because let me explain it in a different way the atmosphere of healing all around the client gets to the subconscious do you believe that i gotta let it sink in your yeah sure i do and your confidence you know when you're around someone that's negative you can feel it correct okay. yeah they can feel your positivity they can feel your confidence your healing ability and this translates to the subconscious that's the first level that will it will speak to and it goes into the conscious because the subconscious accepts that as a healing modality as a beginning of its healing subconscious acceptance then the conscious starts to be aware that it is there and by golly they start to feel the energy they start to feel whatever it is you're sending to them if you are confident if you believe it if it is part of who you are and and they will accept it and do i just keep continuing healing until they feel better how do you gauge how often because she felt uh, she let felt me tell you about that usually i usually and i'm just saying this as a usually but usually healers know when to stop or when when not to stop is more important if you feel the energy coming out if you feel energy moving around this person or moving into a certain area of this person's body mind spirit whatever if it's a strong movement of energy you do not want to stop because that means that energy is focused it's being channeled into the individual for the specific purpose of healing for the specific purpose of connection with that person and to relate to them on as many levels of healing and consciousness as possible so therefore when you're feeling this energy come out of you which most of you who are healing healers can do then you must until the energy starts to wane just a little bit once it starts to wane then you can move somewhere else because you realize that the energy is finished with that area does yeah. that make sense to you yeah i use so a, there, a lot of intuition with that absolutely use your intuition you as a healer have intuition god put it there so that you know how to do it and how long to do it and i meant not and, for just like for one session but like for for the length of like weeks or, or months like how do i know just do i just keep healing her until she well feels better? if you start putting out energy to someone and you're going oh there's nothing there i'm not sending anything i don't feel anything you're done okay and let me tell you why block it you sometimes when you're doing healing you can start out healing somebody and there'll be blockages and you'll you'll have this little uh a blank spot when you're starting to heal them and you have to move that blank spot out of the way because it's a blockage an energy blockage perhaps uh some kind of blood blockage or something is there that is not quite right so you have to energetically move that out of the way however if you've been healing somebody for a long time they know your energy and they will not you will not send your energy to a blockage you will send it to the end the area of their body that is open for, for receiving healing so that's how you know long distancely um, if someone if if it stops working they are done not accepting it anymore okay 
<laughs> Hello, is there anybody out there? Yes, there are more questions. Um, let me read something. Was it me or? Oh, go ahead. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Hello, Lakesh. How are you? Greetings. Who am I speaking to? My name is Omran. I believe you remember me. We might have met. Yes. Yes. Oh, I, I heard the voice, but I am not always so good at remembering everyone's name. <laughs> I think we have not met in this dimension, but in other dimensions, yes. Very good. Do you have a question? Yes, I have. My question is, I did like to know my I'd like to know how my higher self is connected to this universe. Oh my goodness. Such a philosophical question in some ways. Very <laughs> dynamic in, in many ways. It was your, short. Your, your higher self is connected to the universe in a very dynamic way, just as every higher self is connected to the universe in a dynamic way. They are with you for specific purposes they're there to guide you along your way for understanding for greater spirituality for helping you make the right decisions so yes god and your higher self and your soul and you are all connected in a very 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 unique way your soul and you are one you are your soul and your soul is you your higher self however connected to God as well someone who has volunteered that knows what you're going to go through in this particular lifetime and is willing to help you go through it and willing to help the soul and willing to help you now God in all of this is the main focus because Without God, there is no soul. God is the fire of the soul, the awakening of the body, the consciousness, and all these things. You say, well, what about animals? Yes, God is the spark of life in everything because God is everywhere and does everything that he says he does. So, therefore, the spark of life in humanity is the soul. And if you are your soul, are you not? So therefore, you and your soul are one. Self is something extra that God gives you to help you move along to make sure that, well, not always, but he tries to help you move along if you will listen to him. Um, but you have free will and you don't have to. But he will try to give you the, the uh, a tap on the shoulder sometimes and say, is that really the right decision? He sometimes acts as the conscience. So therefore, sometimes your conscience is your higher self saying, uh, listen, why don't you think about that a little bit better, a little bit more before you act on it? Do you understand? Yes, I do. I do. And I really feel that my will is the will of God. And yes. And that I serve God. Absolutely. Yes. No question about it. No question. <laughs> yes. So, and, and one other thing I discovered today was that my higher self is a kind of gatekeeper for God and a door opener for oh, yes. inner realms. Is, oh yes, is that, absolutely. Could you tell me something about he can, that? He can, uh, the higher self can actually control some feelings at times, uh, and that is part of the conscience that I spoke of. Because he will give you a feeling, and you might not be ready for it, but yet it will be there, and you'll go wonder why that is. Do you understand? Yes. But he is, he'll send that little emotion there to make you think, to make you aware of your surroundings. You still have to make the decisions to do whatever it is that you're going to do or not to do. But he can give you a little hint what is the right way or the wrong way to do these things. 
Yes, thank you. And he is here right now, standing just before me. Absolutely. <laughs> and he's a very powerful one because you have many things to do in this life. Yes, I am quite aware of where his position is in existence. Absolutely. Be well, be blessed. Thank you very much. Thank you. And you too, Lakish. No, oh, thank you very much. Have <laughs> that come back to me. Okay. Is there any more questions? Are there any questions in Jim's room? Yeah, I, I do have a question. Oh. Uh, I just want to um, piggyback on uh, what you were saying about higher selves. Would you say that uh, this time in the ascension that there are more higher selves of a uh, a higher magnitude, higher a higher state? Do you, oh, I think I know what she's saying. She's asking if there's in this day and age of the ascension. Are there more higher selves that are actually important personalities from the past, the future, yes. other places? Yes. And the answer to that, interestingly, is yes. Because it is necessary for the greatest minds to be with this planet today. And I will stop there because if I go into detail, it will be a week before I stop talking. <laughs> okay. Um, Xchina. Uh, greetings. Uh, is it Lakesh? Yep. Yes, it's hello. Lakesh. Gina, hello. Hello. Uh, how are you? I am absolutely amazing and amazed about you. Oh, <laughs> thank you. I'm uh, delighted to hear that you are so wonderful. <laughs> and you are yes i i uh, i uh, didn't have uh, time to prepare anything so i was just wondering if you could uh, just uh, read me a message or something read you a message for yourself yes. i would hope yes, yes. <laughs> okay your uh, well the first thing i gathered right away is that uh, there's been some changes recently. There's been some energy uh, recently that is very different. Yes. And so I, it is, it's waking you up. It's making you understand that there are things going on that are beyond your control. Am I on track so far? Yes. And that it is going to be guided by love in some way does okay. that make sense yes it is so therefore uh, what i'm telling you is this you're having a nervous breakdown no i'm just teasing no you're having <laughs> a, a huge mental awareness there's a lot of light that is coming to you a lot of thoughts that are different a lot of understanding and illumination and this is something that you've really wanted for a long time am i right yes much yes. love to you much love to you too and blessings thank you blessings to you nice um that is uh astrid um pete and infinite do you have any questions astrid oh hello how are you dear Hello, the cash. I'm well, thank you. Um, I do have a question. You know, Excellent. I have recently, um, I have undergone some tremendous changes and I'm not going to go into a whole lot of details, but I have I some... understand what they are. I know exactly what they are. Wonderful. And I've had some wonderful energy upgrades since. So only in the last few weeks. I wonder, do you have any messages for me? Of course I do. You, uh, you just had a reading just recently. So there were some messages in there that were very good for you. But um, the one thing that I do want to tell you is protection, protection, protection. You are now free in a greater way than you have been in a long, long, long time and your health is improving protect yourself i am with you 
There are many that are looking out for you, but this vortex idea that you have of just connected with the vortexes. Yes, I love it. What do you think yes. of it? The vortexes are right now just uh, amazing for you, and they're helping you balance with the earth energies that are just gone crazy. They're helping you to stay even and balanced in line, and um, your energy field is absolutely great. Um, and also, when it comes to stress, you'll be able to move through it much easier now because you will know exactly what to do with it and, and say, yes. And I don't want to be vulgar or anything, but you'll say, fuck it. So, um, and that's what you're going to do. That is what I'm going to do. Lakesh, thank you very much. Uh, that was very you're affirmative. So and much love to you. I, and I do not like that word. However, in this case, it expresses exactly what I needed to say. It's okay. Understood and no offense taken. Excellent. I'm glad. Well, I know you, dear. And so I know that you understand exactly who I am. Very good. Thank you much. Many blessings to you. Many blessings to you, my dear. Be well blessed. As you, thank you. As you mentioned vortexes, I have a question. Um, uh, so I started working with vortexes. Um, I found um, a couple of vortexes in the area. Can you uh, share any of your uh, um, ways of, doing, of working with vortexes? How to make a vortex, create one, no, no. is that what you're talking no, no. about? How to communicate, help with uh, Earth vortexes already existing, geographical vortexes. Oh, 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 very good. Well, there's different kinds of vortexes created for different reasons. And so when you're communicating with a vortex, some are created for, a, uh, for travel, interdimensional travel, and they are, they're created for energy to bring beings through from other places. That's one kind of vortex. You don't have a whole lot of those on your planet, but you do have many energy vortex for positive energy alignment, which means that they were created to keep things safe. And the, the way to communicate with them is to feel first their energy. Feel first their direction. Are they moving clockwise? Are they moving counterclockwise? If they're moving clockwise, this means that they are putting things into the earth. It's coming from outside of the earth to the earth. Do you understand that? If it's counterclockwise, it's coming out of the earth into, into existence. Existence. No matter if you live in the northern hemisphere or the southern hemisphere, vortexes are different. They do not go by those particular laws, but they do go by the law that they're either from above or they're from below coming up. And if you find that a vortex is there moving in a counterclockwise direction, then connect with Gaia. Gaia will show you and instruct you how to fully connect with this kind of vortex and how to use it energy-wise because it is the kind of vortex that will amplify energy, human energy, animal energy, plant energy. Things will thrive on your planet from these kinds of vortexes. There are vortexes in the ocean that are helping the sea to thrive. There are vortexes along the coast of California, keeping California safe from that big earthquake that should have happened 35 years ago. There are vortexes in so many critical places on your planet, keeping your planet in line at the axes. Well, uh, is that a word, axes? Um, but anyway, there are vortexes there that are 
incredible and go through the center of the planet. But Mother Gaia knows all about these. Now, the vortexes that come from above to below are infusing the planet with energies that are not Earth-like. They're infusing it with um, a different kind of vibration, if you will, but it is to uh, give Mother Earth uh, the ability to move forward. Not that she doesn't have it on her own, but it, it gives her more momentum because although she has the vortexes, she's supplying energy for these vortexes coming up from the planet, but the ones coming down to her, she's getting energy from those from outside this world. And you can also benefit from those because most of those are very positive energies from the, the uh, solar areas, the planets, the center of the galaxy, and many places. Also, there is still one other kind of vortex. Uh, I told you about three. There's a fourth kind. It is the kind that is created by humans. It is one that Mother, Vort Mother Earth will uh, f guide you through, but it is for personal use, for personal uh, protections, for personal energies, things of this nature. You can create it with a pendulum. You can create it with circular motions, clock, uh, counterclockwise. Well, which way is it now? Clockwise. Yes. Clockwise. I'm sorry. I'm, all of a sudden, I'm dizzy. But anyway, um, sitting in a vortex, I guess. But uh, yes, make sure it's going the way that Mother Earth will accept it and fuel it. But there are human-made vortexes. They're not as strong as the ones that Gaia makes, but they are very helpful and they can be very significant to um, forward motion uh, as far as healing and things of this nature are concerned. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful um, advice. Uh, gives uh, a lot of perspective on how to deal with vortexes. Oh, very good. I'm uh, glad. Uh, we, I guess we ran out of time now again. Now it's... Um, 4, 4 10 my time and 7 10 uh, Jim's time. Ah, uh, are, there time. Any, are there any urgent questions or messages? Any urgent questions before I go? Yes. Hi. Yes? Hello. Hi. How are you? I am great. How are you? I'm all right. Thank you. I would like to know what is my job or what I do in the colonies. I have had dreams about the colonies with a bunch of people, um, you know, like flying and being on classes. And I would like to know, I mean, what what is going on? Like, why do yes, I do all yes, this? You're being prepared for the opening of your gifts. Are any of your gifts open yet? Not really. I don't even know which my gifts are. Yes. Well, when you go to the colonies, this is what is happening. They're getting you prepared for the opening of your gifts. Um, you have some healing ability. You have some telepathic ability. You have some uh, channeling ability. All in uh, disproportionate amounts because you're not sure of your highest excitement yet. You're not sure exactly what you want to do. So it is that one day you're going, oh, healing is nice. But the next day you're going, well, maybe I should be a channeler. But then one day you'll be like, I'm feeling very emotional. So maybe I should work with emotions of other people. Or, or you, your subconscious is going into a little bit of a world because you're undecided. So do me a favor. Do some meditation intention your meditation to to say what is my highest excitement what uh, put uh, put them in in some kind of order so i know what to go for first because 
your highest excitement is very important and you do have the decisions to make. And I cannot tell you which one you would be best at because, heavens, I don't know. You don't know yet either. So you have abilities that are untapped. Untapped abilities are marvelous, but do not let them stay untapped. Tap them and make sure that you use them wisely and bring yourself into an understanding of what is your wonderful greatest excitement. I know healing is one of them. I know that. And I know that channeling is one of them. Those two I know. I'm not sure of all the others because right now your mind is going, I'm not quite sure. But anyway, you will be sure at some time because it will make itself apparent. You, your highest excitement will come to you because of a situation or something that you've done or someone saying something to you that will spark an idea. How many of you out there have had people come and say, you know, I think that I feel energy coming from you or I think that you are good at this or I think that you're good at that. And, and it makes you think and makes you know that this is one of the things that you must be doing. You may have many, many gifts, in which case, do them all. Okay, all right, thank you. Yes, that sounds like me. Not only up there, but down here also. Thank you. I will so make do as many that. as your gifts as possible. You do not have to decide on one if your highest excitement is doing many things. Yes, all right. Thank you. Much, Much love. love. God bless you. I have a, thank you. I have a couple messages which I just need to pass along. There is no need to answer. So Eli Shaman uh, asks uh, blue feline Pleiadians um, to connect to her. She is connected already, but she wants more of that. And I, will have, message, I will send Jean Jean to you. Her yes. name on earth, they call her Georgette. She likes Georgette, but her real name is Jean Jean. But, but she is a beautiful Pleiadian woman and is wanting to connect with more people. It, it's, it's great. I think uh, Ellie would appreciate it, but uh, the request was for feline Pleiadians. I'm not oh, sure you guys are feline. Feline Pleiadian, such as the cat. Yeah. So I see. I misunderstood. Yeah, send a message. I, yes, I will send someone to you. I don't know who yet. Right. Just pass along that information. And the th second uh, request is. Yes. Go ahead. For from Karen Grigorian, uh, she applied for DNA infusion and she wants uh, more connection to I guess Gurk Fitnir. And uh, she wants to visit colonies more. So pass it, I, I guess, to take her. I will pass that on to them. And I am sure they would love to take you up. But remember, sometimes when they come in the astral, some people say, yes, I want to go to the colonies. And then when they come to get them, they say, I'm a little afraid, maybe next time. But so be very open to the fact that they are coming to get you in the astral and that you will be te uh, taught something. You, you may be taught um, uh, telepathy or languages or, or maybe that you need something with your health or your diet or maybe you are interested in videos and, and making videos to help humans understand who aliens are, or maybe you are someone that will be in the uh, the channeling classes, or maybe the healing classes. Oh, it's just a wonderful place for lots of learning and lots of experience and interaction with many many kinds of people. Well, thank you. Well. I guess that's it. I must go. You can, you can give us a time. blessing, uh, an exit blessing, if you like. Thank oh, you so much, Akesh. Before you, before you go, yes, I will do a blessing for you. Tiasat, 
what yet of yet it here of a toast. Kitty Chushi Vieja Vieda tell ye dam. Mutia totra or other souls as a yaj of yet yet. Not a type. Quite quitty of shintia atoru of a Sunday to riata. Shakosha theatre of an ya owned. Mototuria by us. Sakiatar watandi. Urarat. Sushunduriata, Mokiata, Takichu, you did have Algeria. Totter. May always your joy be overwhelming and your heart be full of love, unconditional. May your light be bright, and when you shine it, make sure it shines with a purpose, and make sure that it shines for others to see because you do not want to hide that example of beauty that you are. Make sure you become the full person that God intended you to become because that's when your joy becomes the fullest. When you are truly in love with yourself, you can also be in love with the world, an individual or an idea. Make sure you are being who you are and not just pretending to be who you are. Because pretending is what actors do and acting it was, is what pretenders do. So therefore, be real, genuine, and full of truth and integrity and I will come and visit you. Much love to you, many blessings, and keep your eyes on the prize that is you. Thank you so much, Lakesh. Thank you. It was amazing. Come and visit me. I'm going to go to bed Thank after you. that webinar, so I invite you to visit me. Have a wonderful night. Thank you, Lakesh. Good night. Shanae kanae la hanae. Toriara wa asu presit votia de an. Hello. Hello. Hey, oh, welcome hello. back. Is everyone good? Nice session. Back. Thank you. <sighs> okay, the announcements are... Oh, tomorrow... No, tomorrow we have uh, Kapulnik, but uh, it would be just Jim, Kapulnik, and I. Um, Kapulnik. I, somehow we want to keep it closed but we'll publish it so we'll watch uh, day after tomorrow there'll be a publication for that uh, the invitations are we need more we can do more webinars but we need more um, uh, administrators to press buttons so contact me and Bree and uh, uh, we'll teach you how to push buttons and uh, to be administrators for the webinars yes we do need some beautiful volunteers there are some of you with talents that you're not using, and maybe this is an opportunity to use some of those talents that are part of your excitement. If you would love to be a host, if you would love to be someone that is helping with the webinars, please let us know. We are at a short shortage of beautiful people at, right now. and. There are those that complain about the webinars because there aren't, aren't enough hosts. So step up and don't complain, but be. Yay, don't complain, but be. Right. And um, I guess we join us for a discussion on Facebook. That's, um, that's where we kind of have lots of discussions. And uh, I'm ready to do more classes. So, uh, Speak up there and we'll see what what we should do. I'm so I know Turkur wants to teach a class of Galactic Reiki, but I'm so busy. 
I cannot take time out to do any right now. So she'll just have to understand. Sorry, Chikur. No, no, if no. I slow down a little bit, no, I we will. Should, we do should do stuff. Um, I think we should uh, start the subscription and instead of replacing uh, the free stuff with the subscribe stuff, we should do new, new additional webinars and classes uh, which are covered by subscription. And it, it would be, I guess, very cheap, but uh, we, it would allow us to hire people. Maybe for low pay, but you know some people would uh, appreciate at least at least a little bit of compensation, so they can kind of be. Okay. Uh, and then we can do more classes and webinars just based on that. To the kind of I have to go, so I um. I have to let you go. So have right, a great you, day, Jim. everybody. All right. Uh huh. Take thank care. you, Jim. Good day. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Much love.